The 2024 Grand Final is now in the books, and uh, I just thought I'd do an immediate reaction to it. We did the live stream earlier today, which was a lot of fun. I was joined by Rogue Riot and uh, heaps of people were taking part in the stream, so that was awesome. And just to get this out of the way, the football come down will return um, tomorrow by the time you're watching this or maybe the day after. But I thought I'd do an immediate reaction just to unpack a little bit of what we just saw in uh, what was ultimately, I, I still think it was an entertaining grand final. So the result, you know, it was flat. The second half in particular, you know, there wasn't a whole heap going on. And um, to be honest, I was probably quite disappointed in the effort from Sydney in the second half, considering, well, there was obviously a lot to play for here, but I f suppose you have to start off with a, a sincere congratulations to the Brisbane Lions and their fans who have been through a lot. Um, you know, I've seen every ebb and flow of the Brisbane Lions over the last 20 years. The first two grand finals I ever saw were 02 and 03. And I still vividly remember, you know, what happened to the Lions around that 2013 era, the go home five, what ensued from there, wooden spoons. It was a tough slog. Brisbane fans have literally seen it all. And it's amazing to think, you know, back in, oh, maybe even as recent as 2017, 2018, it seemed like a million miles away that the Brisbane Lions were going to come back and be a powerhouse of the AFL. Well, 2019 onward, they have more or less been that. Now, powerhouse, I'm using that a little bit liberally, but you know what I mean, like a, a genuine perennial contender that the Brisbane Lions have been over that stretch, and it's come with some heartache. You know, I was thinking this. Some teams come out of nowhere, they win a flag, they fade into obscurity, or they'll win one and then fail to get close after that. I mean, West Coast was an example of that. Uh, Melbourne in more recent times haven't really, really gotten close. I don't think they've made a prelim since they won a premiership. But I suppose Brisbane's story is a lot more linear in that sense. You know, they've gotten close and, and fallen short. They've made prelims, they've made semifinals, they've gone out in straight sets, they've made a prelim after finishing sixth, I think, a couple of years ago. And then funnily enough, in a year where they failed to qualify for the top four, uh, due to you know a poor start to the season. It's funny to think that they went into this grand final, it was first versus fifth, and yet I don't think anyone really had any concern over the fact that Brisbane were there. There was no doubt they were going to make a good account of themselves, and there was nothing shocking about the idea of Brisbane being premiers this year. And That's not very... Often you say that about the team that finishes fifth in the home and away season. The, the form they showed throughout the back end of the season, and then they took that into finals, and the, the finals campaign itself was incredible. That start against Carlton for a start, many criticized the way they sort of dropped off and took their foot off the gas in the second half of that game. Well, it means absolutely nothing now. Uh, against the Giants and Geelong, both to different extents, amazing comebacks. They've won two games at the MCG. That was another hurdle that they had to overcome in time was the improvement in performances at the MCG. It's just the maturation of this side that has been incredible to watch. And it's a real heartwarming story for me personally. And I'm sure that's shared by many to see Brisbane finally go all the way. I'm going to do plenty of more content. Like I said, the football come down and we'll cover the, the grand final in particular. And then I always do a video on how the premiership team became that premiership team. So we'll get into all the nuts and bolts of it. But Unbelievable performance by Brisbane, to be honest. I mean, I can't say I'm shocked to see them play that well, but it's funny to think in our game how many grand finals we're seeing, you know, since 2014. I think Max Hansen from the live stream worked out that the average losing margin in grand finals, and that includes a couple of thrillers, is 48 points. And it's just interesting to see time and time again, we see one team absolutely go into top gear in a grand final and put the other team to the sword. And the other team might not even be that far off it, but they don't even get close to winning it. It's, it's a routine thing we're seeing. And you know, previously I've sort of rationalized it as, well, in pretty much every one side of grand final we've seen in that 10 year stretch, it's generally been a Victorian team beating up on an interstate team at the MCG. This was not a variable in this game, and yet that trend still continued. Brisbane just had a gear that Sydney could not match. Now, I think Sydney's best form this year could have won a grand final today. But unfortunately, the reality is it's been we've been increasingly removed from their top footy, and they'll have a lot to go through this season. It was a strange season for the Swans where they were far and away the best team mid-year, and yet never really recaptured that. And we know the lows of um, you know some of their worst form this year was startling. I don't want to labor on that too much. I'm conflicted with my thoughts on Sydney in this game where I, on the one hand, am disappointed that they didn't produce a better grand final. I'm sure more, most neutrals care about it being a close grand final, and I was frustrated by the lack of response. But on the other hand, I have this very real sense of um, sympathy and empathy for the Swans fans right now. I can separate the two, and I, do, I was thinking throughout this game, you know, being an Eagles fan, being there in 2018, 
when Colin would kick the first five goals and it looked like it was going like 2015 where Hawthorne annihilated us. I don't know how well I would have been able to handle another annihilation. It's so hard to make grand finals. And Sydney are a fantastic club who routinely get there. But it's still been 12 years since their last one and now have an unfortunate recent trend of these performances in grand finals. And I just want to say that I wouldn't be surprised if this one hurts more, to be honest. To get there twice and fall short, um, truly, commiseration Sydney. This would be uh, a tough pill to swallow. On the bright side, Sydney have an incredible list. They really do. They have a great coach. And while it may be hard to feel that right now as a Sydney fan, I have no doubt they're going to be back there again. It just doesn't make today any easier. I must say, though, listening to Dane Rampey's speech, his, um, you know, he spoke about how he, he you know, he's full of pride and, and praise for the boys of the Swans coming back after 22, dusting themselves off getting themselves off the canvas, getting back in the ring. Those were the phrases he used, more or less, to come out and then make another grand final. And, you know, that's not invalid. And I'm sure there is plenty to be proud of at Sydney. But I must say, it sounded a little bit jarring when you consider what he's praising them for is getting back to the same position and having the same outcome. (laughs) Again, it doesn't mean he's not right. But, yeah, a bitter result for the Sydney Swans. And particularly in the second half, I, I thought we'd see more and we didn't. But full of praise for the Brisbane Lions. Again, like it's they're the second team to win outside the four under the current final system. It's it's a pretty rare thing in our game. And maybe it's the nature of our game now. We've got such an even competition. And the teams that fire in September generally, well, they obviously tend to win the flag, don't they? But it's, it is hard to do it outside the four. But with this Brisbane team, there is absolutely no shock about this. There's no sense of perhaps with the Bulldogs one where the Bulldogs one from seventh, it sort of felt like it was out of nowhere. With the Brisbane Lions, it makes perfect sense. And congratulations to them and their fans. And Chris Fagan, who you can't help but like, seems like the sweetest guy ever. Um, you know, so many players like Lockie Neal, Joe Danaher, who may or may not be retiring. I don't know if there's been any update on that. But those guys, you know, went to the Brisbane Lions. They showed faith in the regime, particularly Neal. At the end of 18, it would have been really hard to envisage Brisbane becoming the team that they would and you can't help but feel that he deserves a flag and shout out to Will Ashcroft as well um I I think right before they announced it I thought maybe Neil had it but you look back on it and you think very deserving winner 20 years of age played four finals won them all um and you just I mean he's already got a good resume he's a premiership player and a Norm Smith medalist and you just think shit they're going to add another one this year the future is very bright at the Brisbane Lions but you know over time you I'm sure their fans will reflect on how how far they've come and it just I think it gives hope to the rest of the competition if you're a team if you're a fan of a team that supports a club that's doing it tough right now and I am at the moment with West Coast and, and North fans they can look at these examples, it's not just one in isolation, the Brisbane Lions and their redemption story. I haven't even touched on the fact that they came back from two and five, but but where they were as a club 10 years ago to now, and what we've seen Richmond do and what we've seen the Melbourne Football Club do and the Western Bulldogs come from nowhere, it just shows what is possible. And it gives a lot of faith, I think, to the teams that uh, you know are not really in the finals picture right now. Things can change quickly with the right people there. And that's something Brisbane have gotten very, very right. So there you have it. I, I, I did enjoy the grand final, to be honest. You know, I, as much as it was one-sided, it was kind of a pleasure to see a team that, you know, lost the grand final last year go into top gear and play to a level that it couldn't be, they couldn't be touched. And uh, it's a great story and one that I'm looking forward to unpacking, like I said, in the football come down and when I do eventually do a video on how Brisbane became the team that they currently are. So let me know your thoughts immediately after the game. Again, commiseration, Swans fans. I do feel for you. I appreciate your contributions to this channel. Losing a grand final sucks. Thankfully, life goes on. I said in my preview, winning a grand final can be the best day of your life, depending on the value you place on it. Losing a grand final sucks for a while, but when you win the next one, which I'm sure Sydney will win one before too long, it won't matter too much. And that's the good thing about sport. It's not that deep, unless you want it to be, when things are good. I do live my life like that. So uh, let me know in the comments, guys, what you thought, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.